This is your 28storms.com tropical weather update for Saturday, September 10th. The main topics today are Tropical Storms Nate in the Bay of Campeche and Maria near the Lesser Antilles. And we said that this tropical wave in the Central Atlantic could be the next feature to watch. And the Hurricane Center is now giving this a 10% chance of development within the next 48 hours. However, we aren't really expecting anything too significant to develop from that system anytime soon. The Tropical Atlantic satellite shows all three systems coming into view, but Tropical Storm Nate is the most impressive tropical cyclone by far. It has a well-organized structure to it, however convection is still somewhat lacking, although it has improved somewhat compared to just 24 hours ago. In the meantime, Tropical Storm Maria has much more convection, but the center is a lot more disorganized, and it's a little bit more toward the north over here, and finally we have that new tropical wave coming into play over the central Atlantic. Turning first to Tropical Storm Nate, we can see that the low-level circulation remains partially exposed now to the west of the most intense convection. We still have convection here just to the east and just to the south of the center. You can see this a little bit better on the infrared. So we still aren't really seeing all that much in the way of significant cold cloud tops. And if we go ahead and turn on the water vapor, we can still see the presence of dry air very close by. The water vapor presentation does look a little bit better today. Those winds have come more out of the southwest, so we don't really see a strong patch of dry air quite as much as we did over the last three to five days. However, as the system gets a little bit closer to land, the dry air could continue to be a problem. Now, the latest forecast from the Hurricane Center is calling for this to become a minimal 75 mile per hour Category 1 hurricane right as it's making landfall. And that is still a distinct possibility, thus the reason why hurricane warnings are in effect. However, I would still forecast more so a strong tropical storm intensity at landfall, but it's almost a moot point because either way, the primary threat would be heavy rain, with the exception of some gusty conditions right along the coast that you should be preparing for. And I'm talking more so about just gathering up any loose items that may blow around. Otherwise, you're going to be in relatively good shape. And in terms of the high flooding threat, it really doesn't appear appear to be there all that much with this system due to all of the dry air in effect. But of course, if you live in areas of higher terrain or in low-lying flood-prone areas, you may still want to prepare for that possibility as much as possible. The track forecast is pretty straightforward. We're just expecting more so of a continued westerly progression. And this is also evident in the latest track forecast from the Hurricane Center. And it's expected to just gradually dissipate by 1 p.m. Monday over mainland Mexico. If we switch over to the Tropical Storm Maria latest visible animation, you can make out that the surface circulation is still exposed to the southwest of all of the convection. It's actually located just to the north of the Leeward and Virgin Islands here. And the good news is that much of the strongest convection, including the rainfall and gustiest winds, are going to remain to the north of the islands, including Puerto Rico. And the only real weather that you're going to be encountering are the squally conditions here that extend well down into even the Windward Islands and this is going to eventually spread off toward the northwest but again the main stuff is going to pass just to the north. This upper level low located to the north of Puerto Rico is really keeping Tropical Storm Maria in check and we're really not expecting much in the way of any intensification over the next 48 hours however the models still continue to insist that this upper level low will gradually begin to fill and eventually dissipate. So there is still a fairly good probability that we will see some intensification once it gets more so into the southwest Atlantic. Interests in the eastern Bahamas are still advised to keep a close watch on this system. It is expected to pass fairly close to your location. However, the model consensus still remains a little bit more toward the east and toward the north. In fact, the models have taken a slight shift more toward the right compared to just 24 hours ago, so that bodes well for the Bahamas, but the tracks are a little bit closer to Bermuda this afternoon. As of right now, we still expect the inner core of the storm to remain just off toward the west, but it wouldn't take much of a switch back toward the east for you to be in play. So once again, just keep a very close watch on this system as it begins to make that recurvature. And sure enough, the latest forecast track from the National Hurricane Center does place Bermuda in the easternmost portion of the Cone of Error, so therefore just keep a very close watch on it. Finally, if we venture into the Central Atlantic, you can make out that tropical wave fairly well on the latest satellite. However, the upper level conditions really don't appear to be all that favorable for any intensification 
over the next several days. If we turn on the latest water vapor, you will notice that there is a rather large upper level low and associated mid to upper level trough draped across much of the central and western Atlantic. So conditions out ahead of this system really don't appear to be all that favorable. However, we will continue to monitor this wave axis as it continues westward throughout the next 7 to 10 days. The latest 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model shows Tropical Storm Maria passing just to the west of Bermuda, but far enough away that you really won't be impacted by any significant weather other than very high waves. And it also shows a multitude of tropical waves traversing the central Atlantic. This is the tropical wave that we just took a close watch at, and the model really does not show much in the way of development from that system. If anything, by day 6 it has another strong tropical wave exiting the coast of Africa. The 12Z run of the GFS has Tropical Storm Nate quickly dissipating as soon as it reaches the coast. It also has Tropical Storm Maria intensifying and passing just to the west of Bermuda. And in the meantime, toward the 5 to 7 day range, you will notice that there are still multiple tropical waves across the Central Caribbean and into the Central Atlantic, but the GFS is really not that aggressive on developing any one of those waves just yet. You are now looking at the 12Z European run and this is the 850 millibar vorticity forecast. We can see by 24 hours, Tropical Storm Nate is beginning to make landfall just to the north of Veracruz, Mexico. And by 48 hours, Tropical Storm Maria is passing well to the north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. By 72 hours, it's still continuing a little bit more toward the west than what the model consensus has. So therefore, we still cannot rule out the eastern portion of the Bahamas being impacted by this tropical storm. By day four, it's definitely making that turn toward the north, however, and that's because we still have fairly persistent troughing across much of the U.S. eastern seaboard. By day five, we see that this storm is making its closest approach to Bermuda, but still passing off toward the west, more than likely as nothing more than a strong tropical storm. Yesterday, there were more indications that this could become a hurricane. That is still a possibility, although the odds have appeared to be decreased at least to some extent this afternoon and the latest official forecast has this maxing out at 70 miles per hour. By day 6 we still don't really see much in the wake of these tropical cyclones. The Gulf, Caribbean, and Atlantic are void of any significant tropical weather south of 20 degrees north latitude. However, we still are going to be monitoring a broad area of low pressure that may develop across the central and western Caribbean by day 6 and day 7. And as we go into day 8, 9, and 10, it looks like we have a bit more of a prominent 850 millibar vorticity max located to the south of Cuba, but that is really far out. So the two tropical cyclones currently located in the deep tropics are expected to be making a landfall over the next 48 hours. However, neither one of those impacts are expected to be overly significant. So we aren't looking all that bad in the tropical Atlantic basin considering that this is the climatological peak of the hurricane season. But we still have a long way to go. We're only halfway through the, through the season so far. And there is still some time for the tropics to get cooking once again. So we will continue to monitor things here for you at 28storms.com along with our partners at the Hurricane Tracker app. So please stay tuned throughout the remainder of the season.